Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Mmm, delicious. If you're on video, you'll see that it's a little bit breezy here this morning. Today, this Thursday, June 2nd, 6 to 2022. For some reason, the transcript has trouble with numbers. Um, so I'm trying to enunciate them better. We'll see if that helps. So yeah, it's um, a coolish morning. I am outside and we may get rain today, which would be most welcome. Ah, definitely has that. Um, it feels like being on the Pacific Northwest coast or even Southern California on a, or San Diego, you know, a, a cool beach day. It's um, just amazing how distinct that moist Pacific air is when it makes its way over to us. So um, things are going well. Yesterday was a good day. A uh, good writing day. I did finish the actual story. Woohoo! I finished the actual book. Um, climactic scene and all of that. I felt like I had not stuck the landing on it. Um, and I, I don't know. I felt like I, that there's this ending there that I could find that was remaining elusive, but Corrine read it and she likes it. Um, she thinks it's great. She had only like one suggestion for expansion. So we'll see. I still need to go back and revise about the last, well, it was 73 pages that I wrote. Now it's going to be more because I can sort of tell you guys where I'm at. I'm at 90,505 words, which, um, astute listeners, astute and regular listeners will recognize as being well beyond my estimate, but we knew those epilogues were going to be long, right? I finished the first epilogue and it is almost 3000 words. They may all be about 3000 words, but Corrine loved them so far. Um, I'm actually really loving writing them. So yesterday I wrote 3,226 words. That's what I did in my three hours. And, um, when I get to the point of revising, yeah, see now I'm up to 91 pages that I'm going to have to revise. Although I think that the epilogues will revise pretty fast. But it's fun. It's really fun because um, I don't want to spoiler anything for you guys, but I don't feel like this is a spoiler because it's expected. But if you want to know nothing, cover your ears for a minute. Because the first epilogue is our intrepid heroes returning to Castle Ordnum. And so I get to have a scene with Ursula and it's, um, it was just really fun to write an extended scene with Ursula again. Um, heroine of Talon of the Hawk, the high queen. I hear Jackson inside wanting to come out. Shall we let him come out? He's been good lately. I've been letting him go free inside the secret garden. Hold on. No, that wasn't him. Must've been hearing things. The, um, house across the way and where our houses are spaced out pretty distant, but over that way has, um, children. I know two small children and one of them, when she is running around and playing sounds very much like a cat to me. <laughs> I think it's partly distance, but you know, that ah, <laughs> says something that I hear that is a cat. I'm sure. Jackson was happily inside extracting treats from his puzzle box. That's been a, a great thing. I have, um, Jen Twy mom to thank for that one. She's also been featuring, uh, the bonds of magic audiobooks on her, uh, listen up 
review site, so I appreciate that. Thank you, Jen. Although I don't think she listens to this podcast, so she won't know that I thanked her. I was amused with myself yesterday in the blog post that I wrote, which ended up being a fairly long blog post too, but I felt like I had things to say and telling that story and looking up Brienne Merritt, my, my old nemesis who never knew she was my nemesis and was my nemesis for no good reason other than that. I was jealous. I would say young and jealous 18 year old alas not always the wise and Zen woman you see before you now or hear before you now. I am saying that ironically. I hope you know that. So, um, let's see. So yeah, epilogues are going to be long, but I am getting through them. Uh, my friend Kelly Robson who checks in with me every day on writing stuff. Um, asked me if I thought I was going to be done yesterday. I was like, no way <laughs> I finished the first epilogue, got part way through the second. I got like five pages into the second and the first one was 10 pages. So yeah, I kind of know where this one's going. So we'll see. Um, and then I've got two more after that, maybe by tomorrow. I don't know going to write her coffee this morning and buy flowers for the wedding for Megan's wedding. So that's exciting. And I feel like I should be talking about more writing and industry stuff and my mind is a blank, (laughs) but in a good way. Um, I was maybe supposed to do something for Sifwa yesterday. Um, there's this author coalition call that occurs on the first Wednesday of the month. So now that it's June, it was yesterday and it's at 11 my time. And I I probably mentioned this before, but a lot of the people on the call just do not seem like they have anywhere else to be (laughs) because they spend a really long time talking about stuff. And I feel like I am a, one of my failings as a human being is that I am impatient. And I have to rein in my impatience. It is a constant struggle for me, you guys, <laughs> to rein in my impatience. But it's, um, I think it's because I tend to do things pretty fast and in concentrated ways. And when other people don't do that, it um, rubs me wrong. You know, like the, um, the grocery store clerk who like vaguely checks out your stuff and stops to talk to people and gets distracted. And then, you know, some, something goes on over there and they're like, Oh, and you're like, could you just fucking scan my groceries? (laughs) Or at least I'm like that. I don't say that. I, I, I rein in my impatience. So, but yeah, um, I'm not subjected to many meetings that I don't control anymore, which is great for me, right? That's one of the great benefits of having the uh, career that I have at this point. I love not having to attend meetings, um, you know, like you do in corporate life. All of the meetings that I attend are almost all. So like 98% of the meetings that I have now are all things that I am invested in hearing about. They're either about my favorite subjects, me, my books and my career. Um, you know, so meetings with like my agent or my editors or things like that, or they are SIFWA meetings. Well, I have like hair in my face. It's blowing around from that breeze. I think. I washed it this morning and I can't do anything with it. (laughs) So some randomness for you, but uh, so like this call, I do feel like it's good. We have somebody else, um, Michael Capo Bianco, who is a long time and very able volunteer attends those calls anyway. 
but I attended once a couple months ago because I had a specific issue bring, to bring up to the other writers organizations and Capo, as we, he is fondly known, said that CIFWA has two seats on this call and that he thought it would be great for the CIFWA president to attend. And I think it's a great idea too. But uh, when it comes to the execution, yesterday I was, I was writing hot. I've got to finish freaking this book. <laughs> I didn't say that well, did I? Got to finish this freaking book, freaking finish this book. <coughs> And I just did not want to stop to be on this call. So I, I was bad and I elected to not do it. I've been doing more of these things in this last week or so. And I think it's just because I really needed to like taking entire days off of checking my CIFWA email. I, I do think it is self-preservation. And I am, we're technically on hiatus to recover from the conference and so forth. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be on hiatus and focus on the writing. So that felt good. Um, I need to finish paying bills. And yesterday I finished early enough that I spent a couple of hours balancing the finances and I'm still crunching royalties. I have to finish crunching for, um, Amazon and for my website sales and then pay bills. So I may get that done today. But the other thing I'm doing today, big excitement in my world is I am going to in-person yoga with my favorite yoga teacher. First time since pandemic. Um, she's been doing like zoom yoga. I've mentioned that a number of times on here and doing recorded sessions via Vimeo. And I have found, I just do not like the combination of screen time and yoga, it like makes it be not yoga for me. So she's doing these classes that are simultaneous, virtual and in person. I think this is the future, right? We're all doing this, right? The, the hybrid options. So, but I get to go, she's opened a new yoga studio with another gal who I really like, and I'm going to go do freaking in person yoga. So yes, mother, I will be going into town and back twice today. She's been laughing at me at how much I'm going into town because you know, for so long, I almost went nowhere, but, um, so it works out on Thursdays with it being writer coffee day and yoga day. Cause this is the, the yin yoga class that I really like at four o'clock. And as I mentioned, I was chastised by the massage therapist, um, for not maintaining my own flexibility. So I need to uh, get with that. Birds are so happy this morning. I don't know if you can hear them in the background, but they're just chirping away. So pleased at having um, this moisture in the air. It really brightens them up. The other big excitement in my world was we had our septic septic tank uh emptied yesterday and got it's it's kind of absurd how you can be proud of those things but got an a plus rating on our maintenance of the septic tank so i did not know that it makes a difference if you use a disposal because this guy who's uh i mean he was really like a classic cowboy type even had a cowboy hat dressed like a cowboy talked like a cowboy um but he was great he was uh efficient and very sweet. He accidentally ran over one of our cactus, um, sort of, we have like this center thing, which we call the center thing as I don't know if there's a name for it, but you know, like our driveway goes around the center thing and we have a bunch of cactus planted in there. And he ran over one of part of one of them with those big tires. And he felt really bad about it. He brought me out there to see it. He's like, I try to be careful, but I can't always feel, and there really is not much of a lip there. And, uh, and he tried and he wanted to knock a hundred dollars off of the price. And I felt, I, I felt bad about that. I was like, oh, I don't think it was a hundred dollar cactus. And in fact, it's one that we planted with a paddle from another cactus. Cactus are ridiculously easy to plant and, um, propagate. If you are interested, here's our botany section, uh, first cup of coffee. All you have to do is take one of the paddles 
use um tongs like kitchen tongs but you know like if you have a neighbor with a cactus or you see a cactus somewhere where someone won't mind you can just take a paddle like from the bottom you just take that and you lay it on the ground boom done <laughs> I'm serious and and they will root themselves you know put it in a hot spot a hot dry spot but then so this uh and, and it's too bad because it was blooming all these beautiful pink flowers but um he's like well I I feel bad about that so I I'll give you a discount and he said you know it's was like three hundred dollars to have the septic tank uh cleaned and everything and he said um let's just make it 200 so I wrote the check for 250 because I thought yeah uh, and he did great work but I still took some of it the discount discount for my squash cactus but anyway he said that we didn't have a crust in there but we won't think too hard about the crust <laughs> but he said um you must not have a garbage disposal and I started to answer and he looked at me and he said or you don't use it very much and I said I do not use it very much um first of all it doesn't work great and second of all we compost a lot but he said yeah if you use the garbage disposal a lot that really affects the septic tank and you get this crust in there who knew you know that's like you buy a house with a septic tank and they do not give you um instructions <laughs> you could see the birds zooming around behind me they're very active so yes I'm it's always good news to know that your septic tank is in good condition I'm always hearing it seems like about people having septic disasters everybody out here is on a septic tank my mom said she didn't know I was on septic and it's like I'm you know live eight miles outside of Santa Fe depending on which way the crow is flying we are not on sewer we're on we are our own water system and everybody has septic so um let's see those have been random thoughts right what else oh I've got almost all three covers for the covenant of thorns books they're going to be super cool you guys this concept I just love it and we're just going ahead and doing all three because she sent me um all these options for the first one after I you know I told you I got that sort of like um shiver of delight at seeing one that was a like a really different kind of concept and so when I said I want this one and she said oh that's my favorite too which I always feel like is a good sign if the artist loves that one best then you're on to something right so then she sent me a whole bunch of choices and I was like I love them all and I made Dorinda look at them and she loved them all but I picked out three that I think work great for the progression of the trilogy and so we're just going ahead and doing that so that's awesome huh you guys are gonna love them All right. Well, I think that's it for me. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go do my thing. You go do your thing. I hope it's a great thing. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Bye bye.